In today's video, I'll show you how to install and configure AdMiner. AdMiner is a full-featured GUI database management tool written in PHP. AdMiner is available for MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres SQL, SQLite, Microsoft MS SQL, Oracle, Elasticsearch, MongoDB, and others via plugins. Let's get AdMiner set up. Before we get started, have you signed up to receive our newsletter? It's a monthly publication with Unraid news, written out guides, and more. Also, come join us on Discord. Link's down in the description. All right, so on our Unraid server, the main tab here, we're going to jump over to our apps tab. Then in the search box, I'm going to type in AdMiner, A-D-M-I-N-E-R. You'll find it here. This button here should say install for you. I've already installed it in the past, so that's why it says actions, because I can do reinstall from previous apps, or I can install. I'm going to click install. That way you can just follow along from the beginning. Gives me a warning about ports in use. We'll check that in a moment. All right, let's get this set up. All right, let's scroll down to the bottom. And first thing I like to do is to show Docker allocations. So when we look for a port, we can see if it's available or not. All right, scrolling back up. For network type, I'm going to switch from bridge to my custom alien proxy network. If you have a custom network set up, real quick, it's simple process. You just go up to this terminal icon here, click onto that, and type in Docker network create then the name of the network you'd like so you know in this case mine was alien proxy you can name it whatever you like hit enter it'll create it i already have it so i don't need it it's going to exit out if you get your network selected i'm going to scroll down here and look at the web ui port and the warning i had in the beginning here said that it was in use so let's find out double click on it control f does a find it shows three results one two and if we scroll down Right there's number three. It is for my Qubit Torrent VPN container. So can't use that one. It's already in use. And I already know from previous installs, I need to change this to something like this, 8083. But just to make sure it's available, double click, control F, find again, and it shows one. So we're, we're clear there. Next option is the theme. And there's different themes available, but I just leave it on flat because it's default and it works. And plugins, I don't have any right now, so I'm just going to leave it blank. And then under Hide Docker Allocations, I'll go ahead and minimize that. Then we're going to hit Apply. While it's installing, why don't you come join us in Discord? Link's down in the description. Now that's installed, go ahead and click Done. Let's jump over to our Docker tab. Here you'll find Add Miner in the list. Over on the right here, you've got the Auto Start option. I don't use this all the time, so I'm going to leave it off. But if it's something you're going to use all the time, then you'd want to turn that on so it's, it's always available for you. Before we jump into how to configure it and how to actually use it, if you're getting some value from this video, do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe while you're down there. Now let's go check out how to use it. All right, over on the left, the add minor icon, we're going to click on it and go to web UI. Here's the nice pretty interface, or rather flat, but hey. All right, we are now logged into the add minor interface. So under the system here, MySQL, we can choose which database we'd like to connect to. The MySQL or the MariaDB, they're pretty much interchangeable. I'm going to leave it there because I already have a MariaDB set up. All right, next time we have server. This is going to be the address for your SQL database server, wherever that's at. Mine is on my demo server here. So the IP address for that one is going to be 10.0.0.11. And then you're going to need the port number, which in this case is the default of 3306. If you change yours, then just make sure you would reflect that change here. Username, the username for that MariaDB database or your SQL database. The default for MariaDB is root. And then next we have password. Password here is going to be your strong password that you had selected when you installed your MariaDB. Now for me, in my demo one here, I just did a super simple, never do this type of password. And it is super secure password. That's it, just password. Like I said, don't do that. Next, we have the database. If you know the exact database you want to get into, you could put in that name here. Like in that previous video where I talked about, you know, installing the MariaDB, I'd said an example would be the, the ROM M. You could put in the ROM M here and go right into that database. You don't need to. If you know what it is, you want to get right to it. That's what you can do. So we should be all set here. Let me double check. It is a SQL database. That is the correct IP and port number, the correct username, correct password, login, and it should take us right in. And it does. And yes, change your password. Passwords used. Yeah, really. Like I wouldn't know that. All right, never, never. All right, there we go. So now you see the databases that are contained within the MariaDB. This information schema, 
the MySQL and the performance schema and the sys. That's just default information that's automatically there. The one when I had created my first MariaDB install, I had named that database MariaDB, which is listed here. If you need to create a new database, it's a pretty simple process. You go up to create database here. We'll just name this one test, something pretty simple. Just so you know, what I like to do is to have the name of the database match the container that I'm setting up. So I've done one for ROM M, uh, Monica, Bookstack, C file, things like that. Whatever database you're creating, if you have the database name the same as the container, it makes it way easier to manage in the future. Since this is the test, just naming it test. Next, we've got collation. You can leave this on the default or change it if the container you're installing requests it. But most of the time, the collation works just fine. And like I said, if the container that you're installing is asking for something different, like let's say it wants, you know, big five Chinese CL, then you just drop down and select it. But most of the time, like I said, you just leave it on collation and hit save. There you go. Database is created. Now that the database has been created, we still need to add a user to access that database. So to do that, once you're in the database and you can see database test is listed here, up here where it says privileges in the top, we're going to click on privileges. Then we'll click on create user. We'll give this user a name. So I like to keep it the same as a container. In this case, the container database was called test. So I'm going to name this user test. But if you're installing, you know, like C file, for example, you'd put in C file as the user. You don't have to. It just makes it easier to manage in the future. Then under password, you're going to create a password for that user. Most containers default to the container name for the database name and then the user and the password. So the password you could set to whatever you'd like. Obviously my password manager threw in something here. Not going to use that because I'll never remember it. So I'm going to put in password, super secret. Next option down here is privileges. We need to select which privileges we want this user to have. Typically you're going to do all privileges. Just find it in the list here, select the box next to it, scroll all the way down and click save. So now you'll see in your list of users that you've got the test user created. That's all there is to it, really. It's, it's pretty simple. It makes managing the database way easier than trying to do it all command line. To go back to the list of databases, you can click on the IP address up here, click onto it, and it'll show you all the databases listed out. If you wanted to log into your MariaDB, you click onto that one. Once again, privileges, you can click there. You can see I've already created a MariaDB user. That's default of installing the package. You want to go back. You know, if you want to go to a different one, you can click into it. If you want to go back further, click on the SQL. You could drop down, select a different database type, put in the server information, log into that. We'll log back into this one real quick. So let's go back to our test database. Under privileges, if you wanted to go to the user, find it, change our password, we'd hit edit. You'll see this password field here is it's a hashed password now, so it's uh, not a short one. Remember I said I typed in password as the password. So we need to change that out. We'll get rid of all that information. In older versions, there used to be a checkbox under here that says like um, something to the effect of remove hash or something of that nature. If you had that option, you would turn off the disable the hash there. Looks to be all integrated now. So you just clear out what's in there and then just put in whatever password you want. And I'm gonna do this one as password two, super secure. Scroll to the bottom, hit save, and the user's password has been changed. Now to delete a database, let's say you don't need this test one anymore. You go back to the main SQL server here, the, the root IP address. You'll see the database listed, put a check mark in front of it. Now caution here, the information schema, the MySQL and the performance schema and the sys, don't delete those, just ones that you've created. The test one and the MariaDB I have created, so I can delete those. Just gonna delete the test one, select it, hit drop. Yes, it's gone, simple as that. Once you're done, over on the right-hand side here, top corner, just click on Logout. Logs you right out. It's pretty much it. It's a pretty easy program to use, but it's definitely a lifesaver. Makes database management way easier. So if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon members get early access to my videos, and they're ad and sponsor free. The link will be down in the description. Until then, check out one of these next, and I'll see you in the next one.